Introduction to Wave Cloaking in Blender. Here is the goal of this series of videos. We're going to calculate a wave that can wrap around an object and come out on the other side, just like it looked like before the inside. So this is what a perfect cloak would have to do in order to be invisible. Not only is this a really cool effect, I just seem to be using this a lot. Maybe I put somebody's logo up there, wrap a wave around it, and do all kinds of fun things with it. And so I thought this would make a really good tutorial series for Blender. In order to do this in Blender, I'm not really sure what your math background is, and I will try to be as light as possible, but I need to introduce the concept of a coordinate transform. So what we're looking at here is a grid. Think of this as positions X and Y. What we need to do is define a math equation that can move these points X and Y around such that the rays of this wave, if they followed those yellow lines, would wrap in a direction that we would like to do. So our transform really has two objectives. We want to bend the waves around the object at the center. And I'm showing that with this solid gray object. We also don't want to affect the wave outside this outer sphere. So all the bending is happening between these two spheres. And we'll see it a little bit clearer when the, the sphere gets larger. So in this region is all the bending, not outside and not inside. So we need to come up with a math equation that does that and then figure out how to bring that into Blender. So why are we doing this? Well, I think this is by far the easiest way to get this done in Blender. And I think you'll be surprised how easy this is. The first thing we need to do is talk about coordinate systems. The natural coordinate systems of Blender is called Cartesian coordinates. This is where we locate some point with three numbers and it's a position X, Y, Z. The X value is its distance along the X axis, the Y value, the distance along the Y axis, and the Z value distance along the Z axis. And we can locate any point throughout 3D space. And the values for X, Y, and Z can essentially be anything. You know, mathematically, they could be from minus infinity to positive infinity. We don't want them that large in Blender, but they can be anything. For cloaking, we're going to need a different coordinate system. And since this cloak looks spherical, spherical coordinates is what we want. So instead of locating a point by X, Y, and Z, we're locating points by three numbers. The first one R is the radius. It's the distance from the origin to the point. Theta and phi are the angles. The angle off of the Z axis, sometimes that's called the elevation angle, is theta. The angle away from the X axis in the X, Y plane, here's a projection in the X, Y plane, so that angle is called phi or the azimuthal angle. Now, interestingly, these have different limits. In Cartesian coordinates, the X, Y, Z could be anything from minus infinity to positive infinity, it's not really so for spherical coordinates. We can always let them fall outside this range, but then we're wrapping around and covering the same points again. So the radius starts at zero and goes up to infinity. So we won't let that become a negative number. Theta goes from zero to pi. So that means it's going zero degrees would mean we're along the positive Z axis and an angle of pi is all the way down here in the negative z direction. We have our phi angle that's going zero to two pi. So zero is when this projection would lie right along the x-axis, and that projection could wrap all the way around for two pi radians, or 360 degrees. So that's spherical coordinates. We're going to need to convert between these coordinate systems. The first thing we'll do is we'll convert from Cartesian to spherical. We'll then have our grid and spherical coordinates, and then we'll convert back again. And if we've done everything correctly, we will have done a whole big nothing but with a lot of math because we end up with Cartesian coordinates again. And here's the equations we'll use, and we're going to have to implement these in Blender, both sets of these equations. So the radius term, just the square root of 
x, y, and z squared and, and added. Theta is the inverse tangent function. And inside here, we have the square root of x squared plus y squared. That is really the radius in the x, y plane. And then we divide that by z, take the inverse tangent, that gives us the elevation angle. Then the phi angle is just the inverse tangent of y over x. So those will be the most difficult equations that we have to implement for coordinate transforms. Spherical to Cartesian is much easier. So z is simply r times cosine theta. Then x and y will both be r times sine theta. And so they only differ now with what we do with phi. In x, we have a, a cosine phi, and the y, we have a sine phi. So as I mentioned, both sets of equations we're going to have to implement in Blender. Here is the math of the actual coordinate transform we will need to implement this cloak. And I'm hesitant to go into too much detail, but I will do a quick explanation to try to illustrate what's happening with this equation. But it is essentially just moving these points outward and morphing it like we see in this figure over to the left. So this is done in spherical coordinates, not Cartesian coordinates. And the only variable we're playing with is the distance r. So r is the original distance from the origin of each of our points. And r prime is the new distance. So somehow we're moving r outward to new positions described by r prime. For values of little r less than r2, in other words, we're inside this cloak, we'll be using this first equation. For values outside, we won't touch it. So the, the distance of all these points outside the cloak will stay the same before and after the transform. We're not doing anything outside of R2. Inside R2, as I said, we're moving these points outward. And when little r is zero, so we're, we're tight up against the, the origin here, this whole left term cancels. We're just left with R1. So that tells us in the transform coordinate system, the closest the points will ever approach the origin is R1. So they'll be circling right around the, the object that we're trying to cloak. So now little r can go from zero all the way up to R2. When it is R2, it cancels with the R2 in the denominator. And we're just left with R2 minus R1 plus R1. The R1s cancel and we're just left with R2. So when little r is r2, well, it maps to just r2. And so we, the way we interpret that is the distance we are from r1 to r2, the farther out we go, the less they move. So the points on the nearest r1 will move outward the most, but the closer we get to r2, the less they start to move. And when we reach r2, they stop moving. So hopefully I did a decent job explaining that. And what we're actually going to need to do in Blender is turn this around. So I'm just taking this first equation and solving it for R in terms of R prime. So that's, that's all we've done. So no need to talk through this again, but this is the actual equation that we will implement in Blender. Here's what's going to happen in Blender. We're gonna open up Blender, set up a bunch of stuff, calculate a wave and shade it. So by calculating the wave, we're calculating the sine function here. And by shading it, that means we're giving it the color, the transparency, all that kind of stuff, really making it look good. And we're gonna have the wave just propagate in the X direction. And that's pretty simple. The next thing we'll do, we're gonna break that. So we won't be able to render anything, but we're going to implement the code to convert from X, Y, Z to these spherical coordinates. Then we will convert spherical back to Cartesian and we'll implement the second set of equations. So we've just done a whole bunch of complicated stuff to do a whole bunch of nothing because if we've done this correctly, where we start is where we end and we should see that same wave again. However, this gives us a place then to insert the transform where we manipulate the value of R. So that's the last thing we'll do is just implement this equation for R and then suddenly we'll see the cloaking in our render. 